All right, we have our 22 5.0 DC roller almost ready to hit the track, but first, we gotta paint this body. Came outside because we don't want to spray paint in the house. I have some Duratrax paint here, some fluorescent yellow, and some white cover coat. I have my window mask for my body, my body, a little bit of steel wool, a scotch bright pad, my X Acto knife, and the wing. The wing, I don't like painted. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it clear, so we'll set that aside for now. And we have a microfiber towel. Let's head inside and get the body washed. We have our body here from our 5.0 DC roller. We're gonna go ahead and wash it. I'm gonna show you how to do that, or how I do it at least. Uh, take a paper towel and I go ahead and fold it into quarters like this. Get a little bit of water. You don't need to have it completely soaked. And then you need to use dish soap. Uh, make sure you use like a good dish soap that doesn't have any like fragrances or lotions or anything in it because it'll cause the paint not to adhere to the body. And then I just go ahead and start wiping the body down. Make sure to get into all the crevices and all the corners. Um, you only need to clean the inside of the body because that's the surface you're gonna paint. You don't need to bother cleaning the outside. It doesn't really do any good. Kind of rinse the body out so you don't see any soap. Kind of the key there. I was trying to shake, shake a little bit of the water out. And you can use a cotton towel or a microfiber, but whatever you use, make sure that it's very clean. Um, and then just start drying your body off. And same thing, just make sure you get into every corner, nook and cranny, because obviously if you paint over water, it's not gonna stick. Back from washing off the body, you can go ahead and set the towel aside. We have our clean body right here. Next thing to do is to put on the window mask. So we have that here. So I go ahead and peel this mask off. And I always use an X-Acto knife to kind of like hold the mask. It just makes it a little easier for me to square it up and it frees up my hand a little bit. Make sure that I have it nice and square. And then go ahead and push it. Especially you want to make sure around the edge that you have a nice good seal. And then you have your left and right windows. You also, like if you notice how I touch the body, I'm holding it on the outside. I use my finger over the mask, but I don't really, I'm not putting my hand on the inside of the body, I'm trying to avoid it as much as possible. So we have our window masks on, set that aside. And now I use some Scotch-Brite Gorilla Pad, and basically after the window mask is on, scuff the inside of the body. If you do it before the window mask is, you'll obviously, you'll scuff the windows and they won't be clear. And you don't really need to like, tear the body up. You just want to give it a little bit of crease here and there, a little bit of scratch here and there for the paint to stick into. I found it helps paint stick better and helps keep paint from flaking off as easily. And it only needs to be light. You're not trying to thin the body out or it doesn't even need to be uniform. Just try and get it in all the little grooves and crevices. You really don't want to go hard over the window mask because you don't want to tear the window mask up or out and pretty good. So now that we scuffed up the inside of the body, we set that scotch bright aside, I'm gonna grab that clean rag that I used to help dry the body off. And I'm just gonna kind of wipe it out real quick. All I'm do trying to do is make sure I didn't leave any dust behind when I did the scotch bright on the inside, just try and clear it out. Um, Cause obviously if you paint on dust, the dust is a color and not the body. All right, now that we wiped the body off on the inside, we're gonna get ready to paint. I have my Duratrax fluorescent yellow uh, paint here for RC car bodies. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull my watch off real quick, put it in my pocket, don't wanna get any spray on that. Pop the can off my paint and really give it a really good shake. You need to make sure you get the paint off the bottom and the sides of the can. And then I'm gonna pick my body up here by the outside. I'm gonna hold it here. I'm gonna spray about 12 inches away and I'm gonna turn away from the wind to do that. Right, so we're gonna hold the can about 12 inches away here. And I'm just gonna stroke up and down. Just a nice light coat. If you spray it on too thick, it'll clump up and it'll run, and then it won't look good. Okay, nice light coat. Now we'll set it down and we'll let it dry. All right, here goes coat number two. You can kind of see how opaque it is if you put your hand behind it. If you 
if you can't really see anything but the shadow, then it's not really going to be too see-through. All right, so now we're going to use some uh, base cover coat, which is white, to cover the inside. And give that a nice light coat, same thing. All right, we're back in from outside. We have our body painted and we have our clear wing, our sticker sheet. Now we're just gonna finish everything up and get it on our 22 5.0 DC roller so we can hit the track. Uh, first things first, I'm just gonna set this off to the side. We let our paint dry, everything's nice and dry and a good way to check is if you kind of touch the window uh, and make sure that it's not tacky, the, like the inside of the window mask, that way uh, if it is still tacky, you're not messing up the paint on the body, just a little bit of paint on the back of the window, but everything's good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a hobby knife and just very carefully kind of lift up the corner to the point where I can grab it and then just set those off to the side. And remember you got five pieces of window mask here. So. As you can see, we have our clear windows. Uh, something really important right here, it says remove protective film before applying stickers. This protective film keeps any spray uh, paint that comes onto the outside, it keeps it from actually getting on the body uh, and it's a real thin layer. But if you put stickers directly on this, you're gonna have a problem of your stickers coming off when you peel this off. So you need to make sure you peel this off before you put your stickers on. I'm gonna do one more thing though before we peel this off. We have a little cutout here that needs to come out uh, for the slipper uh, lay shaft. And it's right here, there's a little line on the body. Uh, I do it a little bit differently. I go ahead and use scissors and I just follow that line up to where it starts to curve. And I cut it on both sides that way. And then I take my X-Acto hobby knife here, of course being careful, and I go ahead and basically lightly trace that shape using the hobby knife and with this lexan if you kind of score a shape it will peel off right in that shape and there we go so you have your nice round shape there to fit around that slipper shaft now we're going to go ahead and peel that overspray film off and it's pretty straightforward just find a corner and kind of use your fingernail to get it started and you can see, obviously, that there is some paint that is on the outside of this. And that's the whole point, is to keep it on the film and not on the body itself. And normally it'll tear a little bit, so you might have to get it off in a couple of pieces. Alright, so now we have our sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And now we get to put some stickers on the body. Alright, I want to put a TLR sticker here. I'm going to use my hobby knife again to kind of peel these off and apply them. I'll put a TLR sticker right here on the side. Use one of these 22 stickers and put it on the front. And you can put your stickers wherever you feel like, whatever you think looks best. Uh, maybe you have some other uh, brands that you like, uh, Proline or uh, Hobby Wing, much more, whatever it might be. And what I usually do is I just mirror, so I'll put a TLR sticker on the other side and a 22 sticker on the other side and I'll make sure everything matches uh, before I hit the track. All right, now we have the body all stickered up. It's looking fresh and ready to go. We're gonna put some hook and loop fasteners on the body and the chassis so, uh, to stick them together. Uh, the hook side, which is the, the firmer side, is generally gonna last longer. So we'll put this on the chassis because your chassis is gonna last longer than your body. And we'll put the loop side or the softer side on the body. Um, what I like to do is I always like to put the uh, hook on the chassis first and then match that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of these rectangles off and I'm going to hold it here between my fingers and then I like to use a little bit of glue to adhere this to the chassis uh, that way it will not come off when you don't want it to so kind of pinch this and it only takes like 
just a little bit of glue. It doesn't take a whole lot. So it's like a drop on each end pretty much. And then we're going to grab our chassis here and going to go ahead and put it right here at the front underneath where the front bulkhead and the mudguard mate. And then we're going to do another one. Same thing. And this one we're going to put right in front of this hole in the mudguard for the motor screws. I'm going to put that right there. And then we'll do two more on the other side in the same places. Alright, now what I like to do to make sure that the hook and loop on the chassis matches the hook and loop on the body is I'll actually take these rectangles and I'm actually going to cut cut them up into individual pieces and I'm going to adhere them to the hook side that's on the chassis and then I'm going to grab the body and put the body on front goes in first then the rear and pull it over the outside of that those fasteners and then I'll just peel the body back and peel back the backing for those and then line it up and press the body into the fastener that way I know that they're made it up in the right locations Go ahead and do the other side peel the body back peel the backing off pull the body back into place and then press down firmly get it on there nice and good okay. and then you can grab the body here in the rear and i try and get my fingers on that piece of velcro that's on the body and the front and just kind of pull it off and the body will come off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the body on. First, we're gonna put the tongue through here under the front shock tower and go ahead and pull the body out a little bit wider. And then in the rear, you're gonna push it a little bit narrower to get through the shocks. And then once you're through the shocks, just let it come back out and it'll fit right on over the gear case and the transmission. I usually use the tips of my fingers to make sure that the body isn't lower than the chassis. And then just push right on the Velcro and the body is on and you're ready to roll.